And when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. And if we're talking tight ends and we're going into round two, maybe round three, give me Ian Thomas, please. Just let's, I mean, let's just do the damn thing. Just based on giving his overall ability. Um, again, I like his arm. I think he can make every throw. The pick at number 12 is in. Welcome to Cover One, the NFL Draft Podcast. I am Russell Brown. Joining me today on a Wednesday night to talk maybe two teams that were the laughing stock of the league at one time, but things are starting to change around for these two teams, well, for at least one of them. Uh, Jeff Risden, my man, how are we? It's, it's great to be with you and talking about teams. Uh, one of my teams is definitely on the rise, so it, it's exciting, man. Yeah, man, it is. Uh, the, the OBJ trade is uh, just uh, phenomenal. I can't believe they pulled that off, um, and, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but I do want to talk a little NFL draft. And uh, I, I do want to talk real quick about your start in the business. I always like to, to bring guests on to let them talk briefly about themselves. Uh, you've been doing this for a little while. How did it all start for you? And, and how did it start, you know, leaning towards the, the draft as well? Yeah, sure, man. Uh, I started, uh, I've been with Real GM uh, f- covering the NFL and the NFL draft for them since 2004. So this is, it's been a long time uh, f- for somebody to be in the, the same place uh and and get paid at the same place for 15 years in this industry is nothing sort of remarkable i'm very appreciative of that Uh, i actually kind of talked my way into it um to to go back to before when i did it i i used to be uh i was a field rep for a computer company that helps car dealers make more money off of you uh back in the day in the 90s and early 2000s and i wound up being in hotels a lot and i kept seeing the same dude in a hotel like hotels we would like being we'd be in washington dc when i then we'd be in baltimore then we'd be in roanoke and so I started talking to him one time. I, he was a scout for the Carolina Panthers. He's an area scout. So I wound up make, striking a friendship with him. We wound up hanging out quite a bit. He taught me a lot about, you know, watching football from his eyes, what the experience was like, what scouts looked for, what teams were looking for, and things like that. Um, my background, I, I grew up in Northeast Ohio, so I grew up with football. Um, I had a football in my crib. I was at an Ohio State game when I was three weeks old. Um, my dad's very proud of that. Um, so uh, I, I knew football. My, my senior thesis in college at Ohio University was on the USFL and why it failed. So I, I had the background <laughs> in football, but uh, I never really pursued it as a career until um, uh, my wife got pregnant with our first child, and uh, she made a lot more money than I did. So we decided that I would stay home and try to make something out of it. And uh, I, Real GM at that time was expanding, and I bugged them into it, and they hired me. And I've learned so much since. I've made so many good contacts. Uh, from that, that, that very first interaction. Uh, and I actually saw that guy at the, uh, the Shrine game a couple of years ago. Uh, he doesn't, he does not in football anymore. He just went down for the day to, to see old people that he used to know. Oh, wow. And it was, uh, it, it was interesting. He's like, we've kind of flipped spots. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool. So well, do you want to know what I was doing in 2004? Uh, you were probably quite young. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just uh, finishing up eighth grade. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, Anyways, to to show age and everything else, time has passed. Here we are into 2019. Guys, definitely follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Risden. That's R-I-S-D-O-N. Does phenomenal stuff with the lionswire.com, the brownswire.com, ESPN 96.1 over in Grand Rapids. Phenomenal stuff there. And, of course, real GM. So he's all over the place uh, because he's a real G. And uh, let's move on to the (laughs) the 2019 NFL Draft. Uh, we can talk about plenty of players and, and we know that there's probably maybe 10 or 15 players that we feel pretty confident get, get in the first round. And we know that there's going to be maybe three or four guys that aren't getting in the first round. Um, but there's players that just aren't getting a whole lot of buzz that maybe will be in the first round. Um, who's one of those guys? You know, the, one of the guys, and I, I just like rediscovered him recently um, going through guys who I thought would be potential second round picks for the Detroit Lions or the Cleveland Browns. They, they actually could both use him. And, and the more I talked and bounced it off other people and, and league sources, they're like, he, he ain't going to be there. That's uh, <laughs> Chauncey Gardner Johnson, the, the safety or cornerback, because there's a lot of teams that think he's a cornerback out of Florida. And uh, I think he's going in the twenties and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he goes in the early twenties. And uh, that's, that's a little high for my blood from, from what I've seen from him, but 
He's got versatility. He can play. He can play that role of slot corner, nickel corner, but also be your safety. Um, yeah. And you don't have to take him off the field. He can he can mix and match as you need. He can play cover one, single high. He can he can crash down if you need him to. It's not his best attribute, but I, I think the NFL values him probably more than those of us in the draft media have to this point. Yeah, I like him a lot. I mean, as far as safeties go, he is my top safety, but he's 29th on my board. And I, I actually uh, done a podcast earlier tonight talking with Danny Kelly, and I mentioned, you know, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I like these safeties more than I did last year. I mean, there's not a Derwin James, there's not a Justin Reed, um, but no. that that that's surprising a little bit that you know Chauncey Gardner Johnson doesn't get enough buzz I think but I certainly think he's a player that fits a team in the back end of the first round somewhere so it'll be interesting to where he goes but speaking of teams in the first round Albert Breer he stated that the Lions and the Seahawks are aggressively looking back to trade or to trade back in the first round Um, obviously we're Lions guys so is there any truth (laughs) to this it it seems like it and uh, what are your thoughts and, and what are they thinking with trading back I think they would love to have an offer that would make them want to trade back. Uh, and, 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 but who wouldn't um, right. and now the, the way that Breer presented it was that Bob Quinn, the Lions general manager is out there, you know, calling anybody who picks between 10 and, and wherever, um, Hey, come get our pick, give us stuff for our pick. Um, and I don't think that's, I, I, I know Bob Quinn a little bit, I, but I know how the business works enough to know that's not what he's doing. Yeah. He, he was putting it out there that, okay, if you want to move up, we will, we will dance. We'll be your partner. But we're not, we're not you know, trying to actively get out of this. You know, we, we, we will be happy at Aiden taking an impact player. There's, there's no problem with that. Who that will be, is, is, that's a good question that I think we would all like to know. Uh, but but they're, it wouldn't surprise me if they moved back. I don't think they're going to move back far. And I think the biggest reason for that is I don't think anybody's really going to be coming up for anybody. Um, the, the, you know, who, it takes two to dance there. Who wants to move up and for whom? will they be available? That's, that's the other part of the equation. And I think Quinn has put it out there that, you know, okay, if you want to come up, that's great. You know, we'll listen. But uh, I, I don't think he's actively shopping out there like, Hey, we, we want to, we desperately want to get out of this pick. I don't think that's what's happening at all. Right. He's, he's pushed the cart down the aisle, but he's not going up and down every single aisle. Like it's being made to, to be presented. I, I would have to agree with you there. Just kind of the way he presents himself. I don't know him or, or anything like that. I'm not, is deep into the business as you are on that side but uh you would have to think that there's probably you know maybe a a quarterback or or something along those lines that maybe pushes a team in the teens up to to get to the eighth pick um again we we won't really know and i guess it depends on what's on the board do you think there's any chance that somebody like you know i don't think it will but maybe somebody like quinn williams josh josh allen or, or ed oliver will be there at eight uh, I, I think one of those three will be yes, and then you have to deal if you're Bob Quinn. Okay, do we really do we really want to pass up taking this guy um, and fall right. back three or four spots and wind up getting whoever? Um, because there is a fall off there. Um, those three guys would all be Quinn and Williams. Doesn't really he he doesn't fit a need for the Lions. They don't really need an interior defensive lineman, even though he's fantastic. Um, but uh, I I'd, I'd have a hard time if. I, I would be upset. Um, we, have, we, have, we have a draft party here in, in West Michigan with the radio station, uh, 96.1. And uh, I would be very upset there uh, and probably throw a few things if they traded out when they had a chance to get Ed Oliver or Josh Allen. And I think a lot of fans would feel that way too. Yeah, I, I would be as well. I mean, I know like interior defensive line is at the, the biggest need, but I, I think if, if Oliver or Quinn and Williams are there, I just like, yeah. I, th- I think Damon Harrison and Ed Oliver together would be just disgusting. Oh, man. And you, like, could move, you could move Ed Oliver all over the place. And the Lions were one of the teams that asked him to work out at linebacker at the Combine. You can see how he and, and Trey Flowers, who's in town now, you can see how they can mix and match and present all sorts of different lineups. Uh, the Lions run a multiple defensive front. It's, you know, three four four three five two. Um, they will play some five one. They will play some three three five. You know, they those guys can be you know whatever you need them to be in those spots and anywhere in the front. And I think uh, I think Coach Matt Patricia would really get excited about that. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping he's uh, got the sharp pencil for that one, and I hope he writes the name <laughs> down on on the card. That's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see. But moving to day two, the first round is always fun to talk about, but really the the bread and butter of the draft is on the second day of uh, of the draft. And 
it's always filled with a ton of talent, players that fall, players that are rising up boards. Who's maybe one or two of your favorite players on the second day of the draft and why? You know, I, I – and this is another guy that I, I stumbled into late in the process. I am a huge Blake Cashman fan. Yes, sir. The linebacker from Minnesota. Um, and, and I'm bummed because I went to their bowl game. Their bowl game was in Detroit, yep. and he didn't play. And, right. and, and I was really, like, looking forward to it. Um, so so to, to rewind a little bit, I have a relationship uh, – I used to interview PJ Fleck uh, at least twice a month, probably more than that for the radio show. So I have a relationship with PJ and a lot of the people in that program. So they pointed me to him um, and, and sent me, uh, they were nice enough to send me some all 22 tape, which is very nice. And uh, I, I watched more of him and my goodness, the growth that he had from the beginning of 2017 to now is it, it's crazy. Yeah. And, this this guy can really you can you can see how his vision has improved, how he doesn't take false steps anymore, how he's more confident in his own abilities and what he's seeing. He he's a really splashy player. He's going to miss some, but he's going to make a he's going to make a team in the forties. I think real happy, and I think that's probably where he goes. Um, I he's a, he's a perfect replacement for Ray Maluga in and 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 uh, in, in in Cincinnati. Vontae is perfect too. You know, he's perfect in that role. I'd love to see him there. And they pick I think forty second. Um, that's, that's, I'd be, I'd be thrilled if I were a Bengals fan and got him there. That would be, I mean, it's, I don't think it gets talked about enough. Dwayne Haskins, potentially to Cincinnati. I tweeted it out earlier. It's been discussed a little bit. And when I was on, uh, ESPN Rochester two weeks ago, I talked about potentially Dwayne Haskins to Cincinnati. It was just a thought. Like I don't have like an inside scoop or anything, but like right. if, if they got Haskins at 11 and then they go to 42nd and got Blake Cashman, I mean, your future's looking pretty bright. I, if I'm, if I'm saying so myself, I, I like Cashman a lot. Athletic freak, uh, does a lot of the little things right, and he's a, he's a gym rat. He works his tail off. So, I, I like Blake Cashman a lot. Um, but sticking with the second day of the draft, the Cleveland Browns, a team that you write about for the Browns Wire, they don't have a first round pick, but they got OBJ. So that's your first round pick. Phenomenal stuff for them. And Baker Mayfield should just have an amazing second season. But without a, a first-round pick, they'll, they'll be active on the second and third day of the draft. What's the biggest need for them, and, and what do you think that they do on day two? Yeah, they have two re- – they have – they could technically go to war right now with what they have as their starting lineup, but they could use an upgraded at offensive tackle. Greg Robinson is their starting left tackle. I'm not comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Um, he was fine at the end of last year in pass protection. He is not a good run blocker whatsoever. I would like to see them at least get somebody in to challenge him and maybe take over for him. He's on a one-year contract. Uh, they still need another safety. Um, Jabril Peppers went away in the deal. They have brought in Eric Murray. Uh, they, they did just sign uh, Morgan Burnett, but I, I think I would like to see somebody else back there. I think both of those guys are better served not being in a starting strong safety role. And, and, and a guy like Juan Thornhill makes a lot of sense there. Um, they, they could use another cornerback opposite of, of Denzel Ward. And the guy that I – and I think they, they have taken a shine to him is Isaiah Johnson out of Houston, an athletic freak, former wide receiver. Uh, their scouts have talked openly about him um, down in, in Mobile. So he's definitely on their radar. He is a guy who uh, is another one of those guys that has creeped up uh, as the media has gotten more aware of him. And I think he's going to go in that second round too. Uh, so th- those are their big needs. They do at, at some point need another, probably a slot receiver. But that's, mm-hmm. I mean, when you've got Nate David Njoku, you've got Jarvis Landry who they can move back in there. Uh, presuming Antonio Callaway can take a jump in his second season, which I'm a little skeptical of, but I know there's a lot of people that are still very high on what he can do uh, with his, you know, very raw athletic ability. The, the, they're going to be a really good team. I, I don't know how great – I don't know how well they're going to do in the wins and losses department. They will be one of the most fun teams to watch. Like, if you're, if you're, a, if you're a casual NFL fan and you're going to play Madden, the Browns are going to be your team. Oh, you, yeah. You can play as Baker Mayfield. you got all those weapons. you got Miles Garrett. People forget about how awesome Miles Garrett is. I know. Uh, so I, make, I make it a point every podcast I'm on to remind people that Miles Garrett is the freaking man. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's unbelievable. Um, the, the first time I met him, uh, I, I did a, a, a panel interview with him and I'm sitting there and, and he looks like he's flexing, like, like, you know, Hulk Hogan, he's just sitting there all relaxed and he's like biceps and, and lats and everything are bulging. I'm like, holy crap, yeah. this guy's a monster. 
and uh, he's 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 poised for a breakout year too. So they're uh, they are going to be a very fun team to cover. They're going to be a fun team to watch. And I hope for my hometown, um, even though I'm not technically a Browns fan, uh, I've been a Lions fan for well since Billy Sims was there. Uh, that's how old I am. Uh, they are, uh, I, I would love to see the Browns break through and, and reward my, my family that still lives in Cleveland and the loyal fans there because I tell you what, those people have been through everything. We've had the number one pick two years in a row. It's going to be crazy for me not covering the number one pick for once, and I'm kind of happy about that too. Right, and, and not really a first-round pick either because they're making all the right moves. And, and like you mentioned, Miles Garrett is still on that team. Like People seem to forget that, and uh, I love everything that they've been doing, so they're going to be a lot of fun. Um, I do want to throw one name at you because we do have a little bit of time here, but uh, Penny Hart would, would maybe that suffice for like, uh, you know, a yeah. slot, slot receiver, not like, you know, third or fourth round, but maybe in that fifth or sixth round. Cause that seems to be the area that he would go. I mean, he stood out in mobile for sure. He really did. His, his route running was so clean and compare it to Andy Isabella, who's a Cleveland native and, and Browns fans are, are keenly aware of that fact. Uh, <laughs> I think he's actually going to, I think Isabella is probably going to go in the fourth round. I want to say, mm-hmm. I think the media um, is guilty of fluffing him up a little bit more than what he actually is. Um, and, when you saw him running routes next to guys like Penny Hart, um, even Terry McLaurin from Ohio State, um, yeah. who's a different build, but just the way that they moved, uh, Debo Samuel is another example. Yeah. There's a lot more wasted energy in what Andy Isabella does to get open than what those guys do. And I think the NFL sees that. I think they see that he traps the ball to his pads every time he catches the ball. Uh, Penny Hart doesn't do that. Penny Hart, now he tested terribly, uh, and that that's probably going to water him down to the sixth or seventh round. But you saw him in Mobile. I saw him in Mobile. He looked pretty darn good to me. Um, and his tape shows it, too, uh, playing with, with not exactly the best quarterback play either. So I, I'm, I'm excited for what he could do. If, he, if they could land him in the sixth round, I'd, I'd be very happy for Browns fans there. Yeah, that'd be a steal. So it'll, it'll be interesting. I, I Again, 15 days away, I, every day I, I – wake up and I'm like, man, we're another day closer. Cannot wait. I was thinking about it today all day. So uh, cannot wait for the 2019 NFL draft. Jeff, thank you so much for, for taking this time speaking with me. Uh, where can everybody follow you on Twitter, social media, and all that stuff? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for having me in, by the way. It's, it's been great to, uh, to get on with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jeff Risden. That's R-I-S-D-O-N, no space in there. Uh, you can find my work at Browns Wire and Lions Wire at the USA Today Wire Networks. Uh, use the app, by the way. Um, pro tip on that, um, when we do slideshows, if you use the app, they don't show up as a slideshow. You just get to watch it on one page. So uh, remember that. Um, and also you can find work at Real GM. I'm actually working on the big board and all the positional boards. Um, I'm behind on that, so hopefully I'll get them all done. Uh, there's only so many hours in the day, but uh, they, I will have a lot of stuff up there. Uh, I do have the what I would do draft is up there right now. Uh, the first three rounds I went through and, and made the picks as I would make them, um, not as what I think will happen. But uh, it's always fun to do that. I do that every year, and it tends to get a pretty good response, and it winds up making me generally look better than the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Guys, definitely follow him on Twitter. Check out all the work. It's absolutely a must. Smash the follow button. Um, again, Jeff, thank you so much. And guys, you know what to do with me. Find me on Twitter at Russ NFL Draft. Smash that follow button. But until next time, this is Cover One, the NFL Draft Podcast.